Hello everybody and welcome to the first episode of the Eastern Michigan Eagles Dynasty here on NCAA Football 14. For those not familiar with EMU, they have been easily one of the worst FBS football teams in all of the FBS over the last 20 years or so. In fact, last year, 2016, when they went 7-6, seven 7-5 and six, seven and five in the regular season, that was their first winning season since 1995 when they went 6-5. and five. Their best record over the last 30-some-odd years was a little stretch that they had from 1986 to 1989. 1986, they went 6-5. 1987, they had one of the best seasons in school history at 10-2. 1988, they went 6-3-1. And 1989, they went 7-3. They've also gone winless recently, back in 2009. And before last season, going 7-6, making the first bowl game in over 20 years in school history, they went... 1-11 one and eleven in 2015, two and ten in 2014, two and ten in 2013, two and ten 2012. So they are a terrible team, but they look to build off of last season as they return a lot of players and look like they have a pretty decent chance to win, have back-to-back winning seasons for the first time since 1988 and 1989. So out in Ypsilanti, who do they bring in as head coach to hopefully carry the momentum that they have built? They bring back none other than former quarterback Charlie Batch, who had a long NFL career, and hopefully he can come back to Ypsilanti and help the Eagles win a conference championship for the first time since I don't even know when the last time they won the conference championship was. Let's take a look, actually. All right, so Eastern Michigan last won a conference championship in 1987. That was their first one since 1957. So they are looking to pick up the hardware under Charlie Batch. And they also hope to go to some bowl games. Last year was only their second bowl game in team history, which they lost. So, without further ado, let's get started here with the Eastern Michigan Dynasty. Alright, so here we go. Charlie Batch taking over the Eagles. I do have upgraded rosters here for, for the upcoming 2017 season. Hopefully everything is good there. Let's just go ahead and use up some of these points that we have. And for the record, any game you see, I will not be controlling the defense. I will only be controlling the offense and special teams as far as kicking field goals or returning kicks and punts. Um, but even on offense, I will not do user catches because I want this to reflect our players' abilities more than mine. So the players we recruit and the players we get in here will matter more that way. All right, so for the Eagles here, let's just take a quick look at the depth chart, see what we got going here. We got Brogan Roback, the senior quarterback. So it is a huge piece. If we're going to be successful this year, we need Roback to play as good as he can play because we know he's a pretty good quarterback unfortunately we only have him for one more year but he will be very helpful and I think we should be finishing this year with a winning record once again when we got Roback under center we also got Jarius Grissom the freshman the true freshman quarterback he, look at that speed he is gonna be exciting so it's nice that we're gonna be able to have him tucked away for next year. At running back we got Shaq Van and Ian Erickson. Funny story about Ian Erickson, well it's not really funny, but he went to the high school that my uncle coaches. 
So I saw him play in high school quite a bit, and he was a very good player, and he went to EMU, where he had a great year last year. All right, fullback. We got a senior, so we definitely need a fullback for next year. Our wide receiver's looking pretty good, but we got three seniors on top, so that's another big hole right there. I'm actually going to write this down so we know who we need to go after. Alright, so our offensive line's pretty good for a MAC team. Our defensive line definitely need some defensive ends here. Ooh. That right end spot is in trouble. Alright, defensive tackles, that's also not that great. Outside linebackers. That, we got a, solid, a real nice group of linebackers. Corners, senior, junior, senior. Outside of back, we're in trouble a bit at cornerback. Free safety, got a really nice sophomore and Vince Calhoun, strong safety. So, not decent safeties, uh, two senior strong safeties though, it's not good. Kicker, we got a sophomore who looks really good and we got a senior punter who looks really good. All right, so not a bad setup so far. But what we really need to do now is set up our recruiting board for how we want to shape this team moving forward. Now, when I I'm no expert, but when I recruit, I like to fill the class the best I can. And that means not filling my recruiting board. Because if you fill your recruiting board with 35 guys, that's not a lot of wiggle room for all the points that you can spread about. So I only put 25 guys on my board at one time because I want all 25 of those players. And I also want to make sure they're, they're interested in us. So I'm actually going to sort our uh, search here for players that have Eastern Michigan in their top 10. So it's not going to be anybody great, but I want players that I know we have a shot at getting here. So we got a couple of three stars. A lot of three stars, actually. And for a team like Eastern Michigan, three stars are a very good recruit. I know in real life, Eastern Michigan, they only pulled maybe one a year in terms of three stars. So we definitely definitely want to get some of these guys and we're going to need a quarterback basically always need a quarterback so let's get go after Zach Yancey from Hamtramck Michigan I think he will be our target this year looks like David Jackson has more interest in us but I think Yancey will be the guy we go after here it looks like he's got a 67 and Jackson is a 60 overall so far no scouting going into it right now I'll scout after I get on some players on the board. Uh, so if there's two or three players at a position we need, I'll actually throw them all on the board and scout them to determine which ones I want to remove. So running back, 54, 55, 60, and he has the best interest. So we're definitely going to go after Matt Bowling here. It's a Juco transfer from Warren, Ohio. So he'll be a sophomore, but... We're not complaining. We need to go after whoever wants to come. Uh, fullback, we need a fullback, so we'll take this one star from Warren. He's got us on his top of his list, so that'll work for us. Wide receivers, we're going to need a couple of wide receivers because we're missing, going to be missing our top three after this year. So let's go after these two three stars that have us as their number one. Yeah, 66. And then we'll also just go after... 
Rick Roach from Owasso. A lot of Michigan kids on Eastern Michigan. And it's hard to recruit in Eastern Michigan because they are literally located seven minutes from Ann Arbor in the University University of Michigan. So a lot of in-state competition as well coming from Michigan State, Central Michigan, and Western Michigan. Eastern Michigan, not a high choice for a lot of football players in the state or in the region, but we're going to try and change that here. So we're going to need a tight end. We got a three-star from Mississippi. Let's, I'm actually going to throw Ronnie Hill on as well from Albion because he looks like he might be a better player with some scouting. No tackles with Eastern Michigan in their top ten. We're going to go after this guard that has this number one, the two-star. Go after the center. Go after this defensive end. Go after this defensive tackle that has this number one. And then we're going to have to try and take one of these guys. 64, 68. Let's get Ferguson and Rawls. And we'll scout those guys. This offensive lineman, or outside linebacker. Uh, we're going to need a middle linebacker. He's got 56, 58. We'll scout one of those and kick the other one off our list. Going to go after Bonner here. Uh, 66. Yeah, we'll go after Luke as well. Free safeties. None of those guys are worth it. We're actually solid free safeties, but strong safeties where we'll need some, need some players, and luckily there's uh, some options here. Let's go after Emmanuel Reed from North Carolina. Hunter Cook from Texas. 59-65. We'll also throw Aaron Phillips on the board. Okay, no punters interested. Why not? You can never have too many athletes. If there's an athlete that wants to come here, we'll do our best to get him here. All right, so that's 23 players. It's not a full board or even a full class if they all came here, but that's all right because we definitely need a punter. I'm actually going to take off this top 10 here because we're going to need to go after a punter. Anybody with any, I think top 10 is the only interest that you'd see, yeah. Okay, so let's sort by lock and see if we can't get a decent punter here. I want somebody who doesn't have offers from big schools. Maybe this guy, Jamie Daniels from Indian Indianapolis, so he's close by. Not, you know, football powerhouses in his top three right now. I'm going to target him. And just in case, because I, I know where we stand, uh, let's go after Donovan Walker, in-state punter. He's got some pretty good schools in his top three, but maybe we can go after him. And now for athletes here, maybe, just maybe, we can get one to come to EMU. We're definitely going to have to go in state, though, to have any luck. Okay, this uh, five-star Anthony Smith, that's not going to happen. We're not going to try that right now. This four-star, Ronnie Brown from Norton Shores, Michigan. But wait a minute. Well, that's a Juco Jr. I want somebody to come in and be a star for us. Ronnie Brown, you're on the board. We're going to try and get you to come to EMU, buddy. All right, quarterbacks. No, thank you. Running backs, maybe we can get a steal somewhere. Right here, Ishpeming, Michigan. That top three is nothing special. Let's go after Brent Bryant. Uh, he's a Juco sophomore, though. Let's see if we can't. You know what? Let's go after Henry Summers. He's a four-star from Traverse City, but his top three is not that impressive. So maybe we can get in there on Henry Summers. Wide receivers a position in need here. Let's see if we can't. No, nope, nobody impressive from in-state as far as wide receivers go. 
And let's also go after Rima Johnson. All right, so we got 28 guys on our board. Let's go in there right now and get some scouting done. So running backs, I think we're going to go after both of these guys, actually. So I'm not going to scout them just yet. All right. 60, uh, 50. Ooh. All right, tight ends. Man, there we go, Rima Johnson. All right, defensive tackles here. That's not good. All right. Yeah. Middle linebackers, we're gonna need both of them. I don't even wanna scout them. Strong safeties. Manuel Reed goes up, Hunter Cook stays the same. Aaron Phillips goes down. Punters, one of these guys is going off the board here. All right, so let's get rid of Jamie Daniels. We're gonna go after Donovan Walker. All right, so we got 27 targets. Like I said, I usually like that at 25, but I think we'll roll with 27 for now. Actually, no. Let me get rid of one of these wide receivers. William Monroe. I'll also get rid of one of these cornerback or tight ends, Ronnie Hill. All right. All right, we're going to roll with that. Um, I actually need some more off of the linemen, but none were interested. I don't know if I should throw one on the board here. Let's go after somebody decent, but not that great. Saginaw South, Jason Oliver. Yeah, we'll go after him. If you can only sign 25 players, I don't see the point of adding a bunch of people. I want people on my board that I need and that if they all want to end up coming here, I can take. All right, I'm actually going to get rid of one of these defensive tackles, get rid of Justin Rawls. All right, so there we go. We got a 25-man board now. Now let's redshirt some players. All right, so Jerry is Grism. Hopefully he will be our starter next year. He's got a lot of potential. We're going to redshirt him this year so that he can get four full fresh years for us, if need be. We'll redshirt Parker, since he's eligible and he's on the bottom of the depth chart. Wide receivers. Ooh, this is tricky. Obviously Sexton. But we got top four. The top three are all seniors. The number four is a junior. So maybe we should redshirt Daughtry. And have him come back with some more experience. He'd be about 75 overall with two years left. I'm going to go ahead. I'll redshirt Eddie Daughtry. I think we're going to roll with these top three seniors. Tight end, Oaks, obviously. Left tackle, So, obviously. Left guard, Nielsen, obviously. Center, all right, we're a little short on offense alignment, but I think we'll be all right. We got two right tackles. Well, we got, yeah, we got four tackles, three guards, and two centers. We'll be all right. So left end, we need to red shirt hunt. Right ends are set. Defensive tackle will red shirt Kelly. I wonder if I should red shirt LaBarb. I don't even know how to say that name. Because after this year, Granger and Deadlap 
Dunlap will be gone. And we can have Tyler LaBarbera as a two-year starter next year. But how many extra defensive ends? Yeah, we'll go for it. All right, outside linebackers are set. Middle linebackers, I don't want to redshirt pick it. We'll redshirt Boyd here in the right outside linebackers. All right, cornerbacks. Whoa. All right. So top two, obviously. I mean, we're really weak at cornerback. We'll redshirt Hubbard. And I would like to redshirt one of these sophomores, but I don't think we can risk it. So that would leave us with one, two, three four, five cornerbacks. You know what? He's got the better upside here. I think McGill's got the better upside. We'll redshirt McGill this year. All right, free safety. Go ahead and redshirt Davis. Strong safety. Ooh, now this is a tricky one here. Geraldo's pretty good, but he's not going to start. But we're going to lose two. Yep. All right. I think that's a no-brainer there. We got a red shirt. Geraldo. All right. So we got that all set. Let's hit up the depth chart. Get this set up how we want it. Everything should be just fine. I actually want Erickson over. Well, all right. With it. I'll put Erickson in as a third down back. All right. I don't like I don't like tight ends playing ahead of receivers. So I'll go ahead, I'll set it up like that. We don't have another tight end. Oaks is a red shirt, so you don't want to do that. All right, so I guess the six foot two twenty eight Neapolu will be the third tight end for us. Offensive line looks fine to me as far as how they have it set. No objections there. I will just go ahead, I'll put Holford in the backup spot of both of these since he's an actual defensive end. Defensive tackle, we are pretty, pretty thin. I'll actually roll with these linebackers here, I think. Left outside linebacker, Rachel, Rachel. All right, we're looking pretty good at linebacker. Corners, they are what they are. If Ian Erickson is the number four cornerback. All right, that's all set. So for our schedule, I'm actually gonna go ahead and schedule the actual schedule that EMU has this upcoming year, which runs into a little bit of a problem with week one because they play Charlotte, and Charlotte is not in this game. Uh, I used to actually, I do have them as a team builder team, and I used to switch them out with UAB, but since UAB is back this year, I did not do that. So I guess instead of Charlotte, we can take another team that is about equivalent to them. Let's South Alabama. South Alabama will open the season at EMU. And now week two, EMU is going to Rutgers. And I think, bold prediction, maybe not so much, that Eastern Michigan will get their very first ever win over a Power 5 conference team when they play Rutgers in real life. I mean, hopefully we do it here in the game as well. But I think when they go to Rutgers in real life, I think they get their very first win 
over a Power 5 team in school history. Rutgers is terrible in Eastern Michigan, coming off not a good year, a great year, but their best year in the last 20 years or so in returning a senior quarterback and some pretty darn good receivers and running backs. I think Eastern Michigan beats Rutgers for real. No joke. Eastern Michigan is going to have a pretty decent team, you know, for MAC standards this year. And MAC teams love to beat Big Ten teams. So I think that will happen. All right, week three is a conference game. So then they play at Kentucky. It's their other non-conference game this year. Let's see if Kentucky's open at one of these dates. No, Kentucky. It's got to be here. If it's not, no. All righty then. Looks like maybe I can cheat. Okay, I can get Kentucky here. So in real life, they're actually playing home against Charlotte, who's not in the game, so I put Alabama. Then they're at Rutgers, but I can't get Rutgers at week two. So I put Kentucky here, because they play at Kentucky in week four. And then, uh, so their actual schedule is Charlotte, Rutgers, Ohio, which is a conference game, uh, and then Kentucky. So I got Rutgers in Kentucky. Everything else is basically... I can't do anything about it. It's all conference games. So, yeah. So, Eastern Michigan's actually got two chances here. Why is it doing that? See how it says at Kentucky on the schedule, but up top it says Kentucky at Eastern Michigan. Then I switch it to where it's first, which means at home, and it's got Eastern Michigan at Kentucky. So, hopefully we're at Kentucky. But look at that strength of schedule change. It's C minus at home, F when I switch it to at, and the top shows, oh, what the hell's going on? <sighs> I forgot what I was saying, but I guess that's what we're gonna do here. Let me go back, see if I can fix it or if it's fixed itself. Okay, there we go. All right. Oh, yeah, I was saying Eastern Michigan's actually got a decent chance to get their first Power 5 win twice this year at Rutgers and at Kentucky. Neither are, you know, great. All right, so let's uh, get it done with this preseason nonsense. I'll do a quick preview of the preseason All-Americans and all that good stuff. And then, uh, you know, put on some recruitment points on our board. And then in the next episode, Eastern Michigan opens up the season at home against South Alabama. All right, so here we go. Week one of the college football season. Let's take a look. At some preseason All-Americans for this upcoming year. First team All-NCAA, Connor Blumrick from Texas A&M, freshman. I'm not sure how they come up with that. This might be a load of crap. Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> Since this is a custom roster and nobody's really played yet in this game, I'm not sure how they come up with all this. But we'll take a look at it anyway, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, there's a bunch of nonsense right here. They don't even they have Benjamin Victor, wide receiver from Ohio State, as the first team. All Big Ten quarterback. Yeah, so this is all all jacked up. All right, so never mind on that. Let's see if they have any decent Heisman candidates, though. Blumrick, but no, no, they don't. All right, whatever. That'll fix itself as the season goes on here. All right, so the preseason polls, which does not really have any 
correlation to what happened last year, as you see Michigan State at 12 and Notre Dame at 10. But I'll take a peek at it anyway. All right, but now for Eastern Michigan, let's go way down to the bottom here and see where we're at. There we are, 119th. We'll see if we can change anybody's mind in the next episode when we take on the South Alabama Jaguars. Kirk Herbstreet says they're going to win. Overall ratings say, hey, not so fast. Eastern Michigan, slightly better team, and they're at home. Not sure what you're talking about, Kirk, but we'll see next week. Eastern Michigan opens up the 2017 season at Rainierson Stadium in Ypsilanti, Michigan against the South Alabama Jaguars.